Hello everyone and welcome back to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs, a unique twist in the ancient art of wire. Today I'm going to share with you how to create decorative hooks and clasp. Aren't those cute? Um, some people call this a fleur-de-lis. So I don't know, but that's what I've heard this kind of design is. You can use this in many different ways. Um, it can be made as a necklace, which I did. I made an entire necklace out of this design. Um, it, it's, it's really limitless what you can do with this design. But anyways, before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like my free tutorials and hit the bell so when you know they're coming out every week. And your comments and feedback, I really appreciate you guys. So please uh, give me your feedback. Let me know what you'd like to see uh, me create. So before I get started, just a friendly reminder that I'm very detail oriented, especially for beginners, because I remember when, and detail is everything, all the little tips, tricks, and techniques. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut three pieces of 18 gauge round wire at three and a half inches and one piece at four inches. So the first one that we're going to make is going to be the clasp. And we're simply going to find the middle. And because it's a clasp and you want to determine how big you want your loop, number one, you want to make sure that you're able to get your clasp, your hook in. So if your if your clasp, if your hook is bigger than the loop for the clasp, you may not be able to get it out. So if you notice here, as I'm hooking in, I have plenty of room to come out. So you want to take that into consideration. So we're going to take our first three and a half inch wire and we're going to create a loop. And I think, how big do I want this? I think I'm going to use number four. I can always open it up on my uh, six step pliers. And if you don't know what six step pliers are, here they are. They have six steps if you're a beginner and new to this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to let me get this in a better working position so you guys can see. I'm going to push my wires forward. Normally I do this towards me, but I wanted you to see that. And I'm just going to line them up. Then I'm now going to get in a better working position. And I'm going to put that back in, the plier, and I'm going to cross it over. And this is where I'm going to determine how long I want my clasp to get my hook in. So you need to leave yourself enough leg so that you can make your swirls. Okay, so at this point, because it's a clasp, I would normally hammer this with my chasing hammer on my uh, steel block, but for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna do that because everybody knows I'm long-winded, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers, and I actually want a thicker jawed plier like a chain nose. And this is a really cool tip if you're new to wire wrapping. And you're going to come right up into the X. And you're going to set your pliers right at that X. And you're simply going to hold the loop firmly, and you're going to squeeze. And that's going to straighten out your wires. So now we're going to take our second wire, three and a half inches long, and we're going to find the center. And I want a flat nose. That's a bit thick, that jaw. I need a thinner flat nose jaw. Here we go. So you're going to find your center, and you're going to simply bend it into a L shape. So here's what you should have. Hoping you guys can see that okay. Okay, and the next step is you're gonna take your L shape. Let me see, are those pretty even? Yeah. 
and you're going to put it inside of the legs of your clasp loop like this. This wire is not going to stick up. We're going to be wrapping it around the neck. So you want to have it sitting like this. Now this is the fiddly part. Let me see if I can show you the legs. So you've got a longer leg coming down the middle because you have to wrap this wire around the neck of your clasp loop. So I have these very unusual, uh, I saw someone use these uh, a couple of years ago and it took me forever to figure out what they were. I believe they're called surgical clamps and they interlock on the bottom. You hear that? So they lock in and then you just squeeze them and unlock them. So I'm going to use them to hold my wires down so that I can wrap this wire around this loop. So I'm going to hold down the clamp and I'm simply going to push it over. So here's the back or the front. I'll tell you in a minute which is going to be back and which is going to be front. So I'm going to come back to the front and I'm going to get my, and if you don't have these, I don't use them a lot, but they're really, really helpful for working with controlling your wire. The shorter the plier tip from the jaw or the base of the plier will give you more control over your wire, but they're pretty heavy duty and they're by Zeron and they're called a short nosed, flat nose plier or stub nose, flat nose. And I just want to make sure that I squeeze this down. Then I'm going to swing it around the back and I'm going to squeeze it down again. Let me turn this around in a better working position. It's a little fiddly. I'm really squeezing that down. So this is actually going to be our front where that wire swung around the back because I want my coils the same in the front versus in the back there's that little loop. So I'm going to just remove these to get myself in a better working position again and I'm just going to come further down and I don't know if you heard that click and I'm just going to make sure that these are squeezed in and I'm going to start that wrap again and I'm just turning it around always working in my best position I don't want to fight the wire and this is what you're going to do you're going to create these coils and just straighten them up each time because this is 18 gauge wire so it's going to be uh, harder to work with as far as 20. You want to keep your coils nice and tight together because if your wire slides out on the bottom and I'll show you what I mean in a minute um, then you're, you haven't uh, cinched these wires down tight enough so it's just little movements squeezing everything in. That's my back. And I'm going to come around one more time and I'm going to close off on the back. I want to make sure that these are lined up and not pitching on an angle. So I'm going to flatten that down over the top and swing it around the back. Now I'm going to take my clamp out just lining them up and I'm going to cut the back. 
So here's a really good tip for beginners to get up underneath your wire. You can see how tight it is against these three wires down here. Don't be afraid to just lift up on that wire a little bit so that you can get up underneath it to cut it. That way you don't by accident cut your other wires. I'm just gonna give her a little snip. Then I'm gonna get my little stub nose again and I'm gonna cinch that down. I'm just gonna make sure everybody's all tightened up. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know I'm a stickler for making sure any nicks or anything is that's on the wire is smoothed out. So I use 180 grit sanding block, and this is actually, a, if it matters or not, wider or weedier. Uh, it's so what's really cool about these is these are more construction grade. And what I mean is they use a thicker layer of the sandpaper on top versus for me, it was a waste of money buying the nail buffing blocks for fingernails and acrylic nails. Those were just didn't last at all. They were paper thin and I was going through them like crazy. So all I'm going to do is just buff out any light little nick I may have made in my wire. And I'm a stickler for both sides of my work looking equally as nice. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back, just buffing that out. Okay, so here's what you should have. So this is our front and this is our back because this is where we started that little itty bitty loop. So now what you're going to do is you're going to spread your wires out. You want to make sure that they're even in length. And I noticed this one's a little bit longer. So all I'm gonna do, and I wanna get the pliers that I really like, but I don't know where they're at. They probably fell, sorry about that you guys, on the floor. So I'm just gonna have to use these Zerons. So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. So they're even. And I don't like blunt ends if you're new to my channel, so um, I'm going to smash that tip down and I'm simply going to roll that wire over just a little bit and then I'm going to put pressure on that tip and as I'm doing that I'm rolling my plier off that tip. Do you see how I created like a point? And I do each side before I complete my next movement and so I'm just pressing down really hard on that and smashing the tip and then I'm rolling off of it. So now we're gonna close our loops. We're gonna make a little spiral so we wanna spread our legs out. And then we're simply gonna roll them in. I'm gonna make really tight spirals so I'm gonna really close that loop down and I'm staying on the tip and I'm curling it in. And then when I get close to where it's almost closed, and this again is for beginners, I'm gonna push that wire, I'm rolling it into itself and cinch it in want a tiny, tiny, tiny little curl. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. If, if you're starting out, it's really important to do a little bit of each side. This will keep your symmetry. If you just do one side and you're new to wire wrapping, you may come into a little bit of a bump because you may not recall exactly how you did that side, so it may not be even or symmetrical. And that's, I find, very key for me, but you do what works best for you. So I've got my two little ends, and now I'm just gonna get my chain nose, and I don't like those, I'm gonna get these. And I'm just gonna roll them in. So 
If you haven't done a spiral before, everybody has a different technique. This is mine. I call this a roll, roll movement. So you're pushing the wire and turning the wire at the same time. And here's a really good tip. You want to stay very close to where you're making your swirl so that you can control your wire. So you come in on an angle and you just start rolling it in. I don't like these. I'm not getting the right grip. I'm looking for the ones I really like and they're probably all on the floor. <laughs> I drop wires so much, so what can I use? Let's see. Not wires, pliers. So let me use, this is a long nose flat jaw or flat tip. So I have more control with this. I can feel it immediately. So I'm just going to start pushing my wires, my hands into each other, and then I'm going to push that down. And then I'm just going to continue the roll. So here's what you should have. And then I'm going to do the other side. So I've done both sides and now you can see where we're going with this. This middle wire is going to be this next spiral. What's really important is when you're making this next spiral is you want to make sure to based on the size of your jump ring or hook or whatever you're making that you can take into consideration how many loops you've made so how many times this spiral has gone around so that you can get your jump ring, let me show you, over those wires and in through the hole. So let's say you're making a bracelet and at the end of your bracelet you've made a hook and you want it to hook in there. So this can be a hook this way on a bracelet which is really cool, I've done that, but it's a solid hook. So let's say this is part of the bracelet and this is your clasp. So you're coming in, let me grab another hook from here. So this is attached to the bracelet back here and I might do that in a, another tutorial. Okay, so let's get going. So now what you're going to do to create your center spiral is you're gonna come up at the neck right where the spirals meet. And you're simply going to bend that wire on an angle. And then you're going to do the same thing. Now this spiral is going to be bigger than these because it's part of the decoration, obviously, and you're going to be putting your jump ring through it. You could cut this shorter if you wanted, but I'm not gonna. So when you're making this spiral, you wanna, again, take into consideration that you need a hole, so we're not gonna close off the hole in this closed spiral. We're gonna have it an open spiral in the middle. So we're just gonna make a loop, and you need to decide on how big you want that loop to get your jump ring through. And I think that's big enough. May make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze this down into itself. So I've closed off that loop. Make it just a little bit smaller. And now I'm just gonna roll it in. And you can see why we went off on an angle, so this is kinda of cool to understand why we do that, is because we're gonna be rolling this wire into the center. If we started straight and didn't bend that wire off on an angle, uh, you'd have to reopen the spiral to get it to center. So this is just giving us an advantage. And I'm just rolling in my hands together until I hit center. And we've created our clasp. So see what I mean? So I've got three wires looping around and I can get my jump ring in. So now let's make our hook. 
So we've got four inches and three and a half inches. We're going to use the four inch wire to start making the hook. We need more wire because we're bending that over to create our hook. So you're gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna use needle nose. I'm gonna find my center and I'm simply going to squeeze these wires together. Now before I totally close this off, we're gonna do the same thing with the three and a half inch, and we're gonna find our center, and we're gonna make our L shape. And let me see how long that is. Sorry, you guys, let me move this up. Okay, so I'm just gonna put, one's a little bit longer and that's okay, so I'm gonna put that down here. Now, you need to take into consideration that you're going to squeeze these together and then you're gonna roll it into a hook. So you need to make sure that you have enough length to make that into a hook. So for example, if this is 10 centimeters, then you're gonna need about 15. So depending on how big you want your hook, so there's 10, and I'm gonna roll that down. So I want that to be about 15 centimeters. So I'm gonna start I'm gonna put it in between these two wires. I'm gonna remeasure. That looks good. And then I'm gonna get my surgical clamps and I'm gonna lock these wires in. That's not close enough. Okay. I need to come closer to this. If you cinch down too tight on the uh, clamp, um, I need to come down a little bit. Okay, so now, as before, I'm just gonna swing this wire around. It's the same exact thing. And I'm gonna cinch it in. And now I want to squeeze these together because you need to have this nice and tight against that. I'm going to get in a better working position. I'm just swinging it because I can see it needs to be tighter in there and cinching it against that wire. Take my clamp out. Just wanna make sure I have enough length to make my hook, so you have to take that into consideration. This is your time to move the wire down if you need to. And it's gonna be a bit fiddly. I'm really fiddling with this, so I gotta do it the other way. Normally, I don't have this much frustration. <laughs> oh, that's funny to me. Now I can squeeze it in. And I'm gonna slide that down a little bit.
I normally don't fiddle this much with it, but I am today. So I'm just swinging it around, cinching it down, and I'm gonna do one more wrap and lock it in the back. And I know why I went the opposite direction. I should have gone down, not up. That's okay, it'll still work. So as before, I'm just gonna lift up on this wire And I'm going to snip it off. So now we're going to make our hook. So this is what you should have. So I'm gonna get my round nose just right on the tip and I'm just gonna barely arc that up. So now I'm gonna make my hook and depending on how big you want your hook, just make sure that it can fit in here because it's gonna slide in there. So I'm gonna come back on my number two with that tip sticking out. And I'm just going to roll it around. So here's our hook. So same thing as before. You're just going to make sure these are even, and I can see one, one of my sides is a little bit longer. And you're going to, ooh, those aren't my nippers, where are they? and we're gonna roll them in and I'll be right back. So as before, I rolled both sides in so you can see that they are matching my clasp and your hook's just gonna simply fit in there like that. And it's the same thing. And then all I'm gonna do is roll this into the middle and we're done. Now make sure when you're rolling it in, if you're a beginner, you're not going in this direction. You wanna to come towards your center. And I need, again, to take into consideration my loop size so that I can fit a jump ring in there. And then I'm just gonna roll them into itself. Now I would hammer my loops before I begin my center loop, I would hammer all my loops. You want your hooks and clasps really strong, because remember, that's what people are going to be fiddling with all the time. So here we go, ladies and gents. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give me your feedback. And again, let me know if you're interested in any particular designs or you'd like me to share with you how to make something that you've been desiring to know about. Anyways, thank you again for stopping by, everyone. I wish for all of you all that you wish for yourselves. Have a magical, wonderful wire wrap day. Bye for